myself on my own
That was warming with Mr. Tumbling Down. Before that, did it again. And hey, champ, I'm Michael Els, program director at UMFM, the campus and community radio station at the University of Manitoba, located on Treaty 1 territory, the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OG Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Metis Nation. I'm joined for the Manitoba, Minnesota Music Exchange by... Hi guys, I'm Maddie and I'm a host here at The Current in St. Paul, Minnesota, part of Minnesota Public Radio and super excited to have some friends sitting down with us today and playing some tunes. So uh, Warming is the uh, project of Brady Alar and uh, he joins us here and uh, we've also got uh, Keep for Cheap. Uh, Katie, uh, Kate, sorry, you, how do you pronounce your last name? Melanophy. Melanophy, all right. We got a couple of great last names. Um, the Minnesota music, the Manitoba Minnesota Music Exchange in the past has been like an actual like live performance. Bands from Winnipeg have driven down to Minneapolis, played a show, uh, and and likewise, you know, the, the Minneapolis bands have driven up and played in Winnipeg. Obviously, with COVID and and border restrictions, that's not happening this year. So this is why we're doing it as we are here. Um, COVID has had a tremendous impact on everyone's life over the past year plus. Um, and getting into that, I mean, I want to jump into the deep end on on the discussion of this. Was there anything about being a musician that in some way, like, mentally prepared you for an experience like this, whether it's, you know, the rigors of the road, or, you know, kind of being in your own head creatively, that has helped or steeled you in, in some way through this? I would say, like, the latter of what you said, just being a musician, I kind of tend to be in my head a lot of the time. So like, going into quarantine, like it wasn't so much of a shift for me. I'm usually not a super outgoing person. So um, yeah, so it was it was not too different. And I, I quite enjoyed the time at home to like spend working on music and stuff like that. I would say like speaking economically, I think the majority of musicians are pretty used to living pretty low to the ground. And uh, so that wasn't so much of a surprise for any of us. I think we're all pretty used to uh, dealing with uh, faster feasts kind of uh, cycles, you know, just year to year. And uh, so really, to me, it was just like a, a year plus now of not a whole lot different other than I'm not actually playing shows. I'm not, you know, cut out kind of half of the the career that I usually do but like it, it's just an extended writing period you said half the career there Brady I know some some artists really like the studio and like that's where they thrive in terms of you know like the creative impulses and, and putting a record together versus like having to then go out and perform it and some really need that kind of like juice of like being on stage and interacting with an audience do you kind of skew towards one or the other and you know has, how has that been impacted I mean, yeah, I, I very much love uh, performing and that's kind of what keeps me doing it. But uh, I also, yeah, I'm, I'm just as happy to kind of like uh, hole up in a, a studio endlessly. So I've been enjoying, I mean, I know it's kind of uh, maybe inappropriate to say, but I've been enjoying my time the last year, just uh, not having to worry about um, the headaches of, you know, building a tour and all that kind of extra stuff and, and, and be able to 100% focus my time on just trying to make art uh, without the sort of uh, capitalist goo covering the rest of, uh, you know, my, my worries about a, a music career. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm just as happy to do either and it's been nice to kind of be able to focus 100% on one thing for a change. Yeah, I would agree with that, actually. Um, shows are really fun, and I definitely miss, like, the connection of the audience. Um, I've tried to do a few live streams, and it's just not the same at all. Um, but it's been awesome to have just, like, the time in, like, focus on focusing on, like, writing and learning new skills, like, on the computer in terms of, like, recording, producing, stuff like that. So, yeah, I would agree. Definitely um, appreciate the time more focused on solo aspects yeah yeah i'm kind of curious to hear from both of you how 
kind of having this year of stillness and this year of introspection has changed how you look at songwriting, especially um, not having the opportunity to kind of play these songs live and get kind of that instantaneous feedback from an audience in real time. Uh, what do you, how do you feel like your songwriting process has changed if it has? I joined a club here with uh, some fellow musicians mm -hmm. uh, called Song Every Week. And we had to write a song uh, and send an email to a Dropbox um, every by the deadline of every single week. And if you didn't make the deadline, you're kicked out of the club. <laughs> so it was like strong motivation to, you know, not just uh, get stuck watching Netflix for an entire year. Um, and because of that, all of us have ended up with, I don't know how long it's actually been now, probably 60 weeks of songs. So it's 60 more songs that I wouldn't have had before. Um, but then having, yeah, I mean, I, I, there's a little bit of uh, feedback from the very niche group of people that also write songs. So uh, it's kind of shaped that a lot. It's uh, also not being able to play, like I'm recording everything in my apartment now. I moved my studio here. And uh, so that, that changes things. You know, you're used to writing a song that might be for an audience. You might be thinking of things that involve a live audience's understanding of that song, like live drums or like big exciting moments. And now everything has gone very introspective and and gets weirder because it's just you in your head and a house forever so things yeah things have changed a lot for me anyways for better or worse yeah that last part where it's just you in your head in your house like that's really been a big part of it for me in my songwriting um in this whole quarantine deal i feel like i i don't know my lyrics have changed much more than anything else i feel like um, I've started to just journal more and from that my words have changed kind of like from more like emotionally focused to focused on like anecdotes stuff like that like day-to-day -day things which has been kind of fun um, I feel like I take it a little less seriously and it allows me to do it more often and with less pressure on myself so that's been cool um, and I also have been playing a lot less piano recently and playing like more guitar so that's been really cool to get some practice in on other instruments that's influenced my writing a lot as well. Focus on on kind of just writing a song to kind of get it out, right? Whether it's Brady's kind of like he has to do it every week, or Kate, you're just kind of doing it as like kind of like almost a journaling exercise. Has that anything you've written like surprised you? Like, oh, I didn't know I had a song like this in me, but just kind of purging something opened you up to like a, a new space in your sort of creative output. Um, yeah, I would say the for me just the consistency. Uh, normally, I, I never wrote uh, as many songs as frequently uh, because I was on tour or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You're just working or busy. Um, but now I guess like the consistency of it, there's there's a lot of weeks that are just not a good song or something that was sort of out of your kind of... Uh, regular milieu of what you usually write it, it and that's kind of surprising there's a, a lot of songs where i i would just sit down and it would just come out like a sneeze and it's something that i normally wouldn't write about or something very heavily political that i normally don't do and it's not something i'm going to release or you know it's never going to be heard outside of that dropbox but uh the consistency of it you you sort of realize that there's there's a limitless supply of songs inside of you but uh not all of them need to be i guess heard by everyone i relate to it but also in a way where it's just like all my songs have become so different because of that i don't know if that's exactly what you're saying but like yeah um it's hard to pick like one song that has like surprised me because i feel like almost all of them have at this point um i just keep Cause I'm not, you know, I'm not thinking about shows. I'm not thinking about like, oh, is this going to form a cohesive set? Like I haven't really been thinking about recording stuff either. So like, it's all just like making what I want in the moment. Um, so it's, yeah, it's all been a little surprising, I would say. Yeah, I would say that uh, that's, that's a good point. Like uh, doing uh, art for art's sake uh, outside of your, cause you get kind of stuck in routines of, uh, outside influences external influences on, on your your 
career as a musician that's unavoidable uh, in the music industry. But now that we've been like artificially separated from that, there's tons of little surprising moments that uh, I've found, at least in my own songs, that I I never would have uh, explored before. Like the like the song I uh, I released now, or I'm going to be releasing soon, Mr. Tumbling Down. Uh, normally, I would have like I think censored that a little bit more, or, or uh, like it's a song that I, I wrote and I thought, well, these lyrics are kind of silly and it's slightly embarrassing, but it's something I don't have to feel embarrassed about because I'm not in, ever doing it in front of an audience anymore, and so I just kind of let it happen and, and wrote the song, and uh, now that I've had some time with it, I, I'm not embarrassed about it at all. I think it's great. I think it's like a new territory that I would have avoided because of, you know, uh, peer pressure or something. I don't know, just self-loathing. <laughs> I definitely feel that, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brady, we're kind of talking a little bit about how the pandemic has caused you to sort of separate from this, or at least artificially separate from this um, kind of idea of making music for purpose. And it's kind of let you focus on art for art's sake. I'm curious to hear both of you guys, like what are some big lessons from this sort of art for art's sake period that you want to take back with you when saying when things get back to how they were is obviously um, something very that we'd say very loosely now but when shows come back and maybe things get to a little bit more of a social musical climate again for me um i'm so grateful for um the, the opportunity of of being separated from the the industry side of things because uh we're you know a, a musicians that are at a certain level are being told by just about everybody what they should be doing and it's hard not to listen to i mean if you're getting told a hundred different things you kind of forget what it the point was for yourself at some point um and so making art for art's sake has been so refreshing because there's no going back once you realize that like that like you don't have to care about anything else and the success from uh as an artist comes from the act of actually just creating in the first place and that's the end that's the end of the success is the act of creation and so now that i have kind of like uh snapped out of it it's the greatest feeling of all time. It's so refreshing. Like uh, I feel so relieved as as an artist to, you know, once things get, once we're able to play shows again, I feel so much more prepared and ready for that than I ever have been. Yeah, I feel like um, the thing you mentioned about the break was very true. Um, just having to step away from it, and I feel like especially. Um, in the band like we had just been playing so many shows at that point like basement shows stuff that was just like kind of monotonous and like we were running ourselves like kind of you know just running ourselves down with that so it was really cool to have it kind of all like i don't know it wasn't cool but it was helpful for our art to like have it come to a stop and then like take some time and be like yeah what do we really want to do like what do we really want to be making right now um just having that space to figure out more about our sound and like not have to worry about the day-to-day -day shows and like practices and stuff like that it's pretty cool for inspiration yeah Brady I know you said you know you don't have to like listen to other people's stuff and have it influence you you know you can focus on your own art but I'm, I'm curious if for either of you if there were other artists or other pieces of work that kind of helped you during the past year right like not necessarily creatively but just emotionally or as a person during like a very tumultuous time I know for me music was definitely something that helped me at times particularly i started getting really into ambient music and, and things that try to like calm me during periods when it was especially uncalm uh, i'm curious if you know either of you had works of art or something that that helped you um yeah well uh, there's definitely been a lot more time to listen to music um although it's in a different way uh like i don't have to commute anymore so i don't listen to music uh, I'm certainly not on tour anymore, so you know that takes out an enormous amount of time and a, a specific way you listen to music. 
So uh, now I've been focusing a lot, uh, like my, well, not focusing, I've been spending a lot of my time uh, listening to music in, I guess, more of a home setting. And uh, that definitely changes what I listen to. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, there's, I just have been listening to so much of everything that I, I, I don't know how to answer that, like, in one way. Although, one thing that comes to mind is uh, Spirit of the Beehive, I guess. Listen to them more than anything else right now. Uh, I think it's, I don't know why or if it has anything to do with being stuck at home or uh, the sort of weird dreamlike surrealness to it, but yeah. Yeah, I feel like, um, like you said, there's so much out there right now and I feel like I've been doing more listening than ever. Um, I usually will like get really into one album, but I feel like since quarantine started, I've been like kind of jumping all over the place with my music and I know other members of the band have too. Um, and so I feel like, I don't know, it's hard to definitely, it's definitely hard to name one piece of art that's like, influenced us um during this time but i feel like we've almost gotten just more exposure during this time than any other time um taking in a lot of influences so i don't know yeah it's definitely that's kind of a hard question but um definitely making me do some reflection yeah <laughs> basically just l fewer driving songs and more uh, long sitting at home songs. <laughs> uh, kind of bouncing off the idea, you said sitting at home, and I know the phrase like stuck at home has come up a couple times throughout like our conversation here. Um, and we're all, our homes are in different places right now. That's a huge part of like what this exchange is about. And I wanted to kind of ask you guys about if your idea of what home is or why that space is important to you has changed without touring or without um, like keep repeat bouncing around basement shows every single weekend or um, any of those like added elements um, what is what is home how's the your idea of home changed um I don't know if it has changed it's sort of I mean it's the same one I had mm -hmm. um, just a bad apartment <laughs> <laughs> and now I see all of its you know, uh little horrible blemishes and pimples and problems uh very up close but home as in uh i would say winnipeg uh, you know for better or worse it's uh it, it is uh i don't know for me home like just like a, a, a general term of home it it doesn't really necessarily mean the city you live in, uh, and being an artist that would usually be in many other cities during a year, I don't know if, uh, if that has changed now that I've been stuck here this whole time, but, um, sort of rambling now, I don't know, I guess, uh, home hasn't really changed. It's sort of vague and, uh, don't know if it matters where you are. For me, it's hard to like, yeah, talk about home in terms of a certain place because I feel like it's just where you're comfortable and where you feel like you have a community and stuff like that. Um, but I feel like being in my home all the time has made me like, it's really changed my relationship with my house, you know, and like my relationship with my room and where I make my music, like my kitchen, everything, spending so much time there. Um, I've, I've always been really busy. I've never really been a person who's like home a lot before quarantine. And I never would spend a lot of time like taking care of my space or like making food for myself, stuff like that. And I feel like that's really changed. And it's also like really influenced my ability to make stuff at home. And that's been really cool. Um, just like, yeah, treating the space a little differently now that I'm here all the time. Like it's been been really impactful on my process, I think. Yeah, that's a good point. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> So I guess coming out of this, are there any like goals or aspirations in like kind of the short to medium term for, for either of you, you know, either artistically or just personally that, you know, you, you want to do? Uh, I would say I, I, I hope I continue uh, feeling the same way I do about the creative process right now. I hope that doesn't die as soon as I'm able to, you know, get outside 
a little more, but uh, goals are usually, you know, same as they always have been, just get extremely personally wealthy and uh, live a life of luxury. But how to get there? I feel like goals for our band, um, we're right now we're recording an album, so that's pretty cool. Right now our goal is to finish that and um, get all that in order. Um, and as soon as we can, we would love to tour, um, but we'll see when we're able to do that. We haven't like had a chance to yet, so that would be really cool. Um, and I feel like more like abstractly, like we want to, I feel like it's just given us such good energy. Like we've, we've talked about a little bit how like it's, it was so refreshing to have a break and like come back and be like, we're going to make music that we want to make, you know, we're not going to worry about all this other stuff. Um, I think we just want to carry that energy forward, even as stuff like continues to um, go back to normal, you know, quote unquote. But yeah, yeah. I think it, it like it. It's uh, beyond just music, beyond just musicians or artists, but everyone sort of feels this um, like the normal that we're all going back to. Nobody, nobody wants it. <laughs> like nobody wants to go back. Everyone. Is, is sort of sick of the the stuff that they were dealing with before and it has been amplified 10,000 times uh during the pandemic uh and people are just so disenfranchised with the world that we live in right now that i think the goals have shifted so much from your individual goals or your career goals or your personal whatever you have like i don't care I don't care about a career anymore. I don't care about, you know, making it or not as a musician. I'm literally just going to try to have a good day every day. And I think a lot of people are feeling like that, you know, it doesn't matter really if they're an artist or not. And so coming out of this, we're all just sort of going to, I don't know. It's like everyone is going to become the dude or like, I don't know, a terrorist. Just like there's no in between. I'm going to be the dude, by the way, not, not the other one. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Certainly, if that's the polarity of choice, that you know, yeah. I hope more people skew skew dude. Um, I, I guess before we wrap up, I do want to mention a quick thanks to the the sponsors, the Manitoba Minnesota Music Exchange, who are Factor, the Manitoba Film and Music Government of Manitoba, the Minnesota Legacy Amendments Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Uh, they've all provided funding and been a partner in the past. Obviously, when it was you know actually physically driving up and up and down from Minnesota to Manitoba, but uh, also for this video series. And, and thanks to, to Kate and Brady for for joining us on this uh, exchange today. It's too bad the two of you couldn't, you know, meet in person, but maybe in the future, once the once the borders open and we've all got our shots and can travel safely. Yeah, thank you so much, Michael, for uh, hanging out with us down down south. It's weird for Minnesotans to say that we're south of anything. So this is very thrilling for us. Um, and thank you so much to Brady and Kate. We are going to hear a couple tracks from Keep for Cheap right now. We're going to start out with their newest track. It's called Forgive Me. And then we're going to hear Beside and close it out with Day Without You. Hey, we're Keep For Cheap and we're in a basement. The song is called Day Without You.
Hi, I'm Kate from Keep for Cheap. Um, I'm in the basement, and this is Beside. Hello, uh, we're Keep for Cheap here in the backyard. This is Forgive Me.
Forgive me.